The James Webb Telescope works daily for the benefit of science. NASA doesn't publish official press releases, but in the last video, we said that the telescope photos appear in the public domain on the same day. And today, we will analyze a new pack, Jupiter's moon, the largest star cluster in the Milky Way, and the cosmic wheel are waiting for you. So let's not waste your precious time and let's get started. In front of you is Omega Centauri, the largest globular star cluster in our Milky Way galaxy. More specifically, in these photos of James Webb, there are only two tiny parts of this cluster. It is really huge, and in full size, it looks like this. Thanks to his advanced optics, James Webb looked inside this incredible object and demonstrated how huge the number of stars in this cluster was and how close they were to each other. Specifically, Omega Centauri, also known as NGC 5139, contains about 10 million stars. All of them are compressed into a kind of ball with a diameter of 150 light years. For comparison, in a ball with a diameter of 150 light years around our Sun, according to the most daring estimates, there are about 50,000 stars. And officially, we found about 15,000. That is, the Omega Centauri cluster contains several tens of times more stars than our Milky Way region. That is why it is called a star cluster. More specifically, a globular star cluster. This is a cluster where a huge number of stars are bound by gravity and revolve in a disciplined manner around the center of the galaxy as a satellite. There are also open star clusters, like the Pleiades. These objects are simply located side by side because they're formed from the same gas cloud. They are not organized and there are no powerful forces of gravity. Globular clusters, and specifically Omega Centauri photographed by James Webb, have all these signs. Moreover, it is believed that this cluster was once a dwarf galaxy that our Milky Way devoured. This is indicated by the cluster's huge mass and density, and the fact that some stars were knocked out from Omega Centauri. Such a fate befell Captain Star, one of our Sun's neighbors. It is located only 13 light years from us, but it comes from the Omega Centauri cluster. It is 15,000 light years away from Earth. It is believed that once upon a time, the Milky Way collided with a dwarf galaxy, captured it, and Captain Star, along with others, was knocked out of the cluster by a shock wave. Basically, this object is fascinating. The average distance between the stars in James Webb's photo is less than half a light year. That is, eight times less than the distance from the Sun to the nearest star, Alpha Centauri. So if you take our solar system and put it somewhere in the photo of James Webb, then it would be very light at night. To be specific, imagine 20 full moons in the Earth's night sky, about as bright at night for hypothetical aliens on planets inside the Omega Centauri cluster. It is, of course, still dimmer than the Sun. It is 400,000 times brighter than the Moon. But still, 20 full moons at the same time is very bright, and the Omega Centauri cluster looks romantic at night. Why was James Webb photographing the cluster at all? This is a surprise because these two photos were used as a test not of Omega Centauri, but of James Webb himself. Scientists tested the telescope for stress resistance. Specifically, James Webb was sent to the densest part of space to load each image pixel and check how they behave, what artifacts they leave, and how much noise will appear in the photo. As you can see, the telescope passed even such a stress test. The pictures look rich, high quality, and promising. Well, let's move on to another image, this time the official one. NASA has issued a press release for the first time since the five original images. It contains a photo of the Cartwheel Galaxy. The object really looks like a wheel, and this is not an accident, but the harsh laws of physics. Once upon a time, this galaxy was similar to our Milky Way, and two smaller galaxies that can be seen on the left in the photo. But about 700 million years ago, when the first animals were just beginning to walk on the Earth, another galaxy crashed into the cartwheel at great speed, which is not visible in this frame. What happened was the same as when you throw a stone into the water. The poor galaxy received shockwaves and insane flows of matter flying away from the collision at great speeds. Since no one eliminated gravity, the process turned out to be quite symmetrical and uniform. Two rings formed. A very bright one can be seen in the center and a dimmer one at the edges of the galaxy. Both rings are expanding after a long-standing explosion and the flow of matter between them is like the spokes in a wheel. Actually, this is where the galaxy got its name, the cartwheel. If we analyze it in more detail, the stars practically do not collide when galaxies collide. The main destructive factor is gravity. 
which starts to act crazy and moves dust and matter between stars in different directions. Specifically, in this case, a small galaxy passed through a large one, and gravitational perturbations, as it were, knocked out all the matter from the center and away. This is how the outer ring was formed, where constant collisions of gas led to the beginning of star formation processes. In the outer shell of the Cartwheel Galaxy, supernova are constantly ignited and explosions are thundering one after another. The inner shell is much brighter and more interesting. Remember Omega Centauri? It is these colossal star clusters that make the inner wheel shine so brightly. A collision with a galaxy in the past caused a gravitational collapse that ignited an enormous number of stars. Under the influence of the same gravity, they huddle together in dense clusters. That's why everything is so bright and also dusty. After all, the dust raised into the air by the collision until this moment actually did not allow scientists to look inside the galaxy. This problem is visible both in the Hubble photographs and in the frames of other telescopes processed for the optical range. But James Webb infrared sensors excelled here too. They enlightened the cartwheel, and scientists, for the first time in history, saw everything happening in this galaxy under a veil of dust. The blue dots in the photo are stars or small regions of star formation. It is immediately striking how symmetrically and densely the stars are located closer to the center and what chaos is happening on the outskirts of the galaxy that was thrown out by the collision. In the very center of the image, you can see an incredibly bright source of radiation that glows like a light bulb, even in the infrared range of James Webb. These are the consequences of the operation of this supermassive black hole at the center of the Cartwheel Galaxy. Its effect on the galaxy's chaos is also being studied by scientists. In fact, we're looking at a galaxy in the process of evolution. It is evolving from an ordinary spiral galaxy into a ring galaxy, and the process is far from over. Let's move on and talk about the following photo of James Webb. In front of you is Jupiter's moon of Ganymede, and the photo immediately raises questions. Why does the telescope send incredible quality images of billions of years old galaxies but cannot photograph the largest satellite in the solar system? Well, first of all, photography is not the main task of James Webb at all. Its mission is to analyze the spectra and study objects of deep space in the infrared range. Secondly, no matter how powerful the telescope is, it will still not take pictures of the objects of the solar system better than the devices we launched at them. Specifically, Ganymede was perfectly photographed by the Juno mission, which flew very close to the satellite. We should not expect James Webb gives a better photo while being hundreds of thousands of kilometers away. Hubble's photo of Ganymede is also not the best quality. They're not required from space telescopes. The main task of both Hubble and Webb was spectrography, that is, an analysis of what Ganymede radiates. In 2021, Hubble data confirmed that Jupiter's moon has water vapor signatures. So James Webb did the same thing, only by doing it in more detail. The study's results are not yet available. Still, there's no doubt that the new telescope will tell us in detail the structure of the fragile atmosphere of Ganymede and also analyze its composition. This is very interesting because Juno has already photographed caps of water ice. According to the Galileo probe, there is an underwater ocean on Ganymede and consequently, hypothetical conditions for life. It is worth waiting for the research results and not particularly worrying about the poor photo quality. For wallpaper on your desktop, it is better to go to the photograph of the galaxy cluster WHL0137-08, which amateurs have already pulled out of the James Webb archives and processed. It shows a photo of the most distant star found, Arendelle, and a huge number of stars and galaxies. They're being studied right now, so for now, there's not much information to tell about this photo, but we can talk about the expected selfie that the telescope took. The photo shows many galaxies and objects in the distant cosmos. In the background, you can see James Webb Telescope as if from the third person. But how did it do that? Unlike Mars rovers taking selfies, James Webb does not have a selfie stick. However, we did get an epic shot of the Lagrange point. In fact, there's no magic here. Even more, it's a regular routine, and the telescope takes selfies like this every two days. The truth is that the telescope's main mirror is a prefabricated mirror and consists of honeycomb-like mirrors. This was done for the convenience of sending the telescope into space, but now that all the mirrors are open, they need to be calibrated periodically. To do this, the telescope takes its focus from space to its own secondary mirror. Then the primary mirror begins to collect light from the secondary mirror. Scientists collect data on deviations, 
and the result is a selfie. The operation is repeated every two days, and fortunately, the photo shows micrometeorites and other inhabitants of space while the telescope is not significantly damaged. Well, let's finish the episode with a joke by a French scientist who gave out a slice of chorizo sausage for a photograph of the desk of the star Proxima Centauri from James Webb. This was done to demonstrate how easy it is to convince people nowadays that fake is true. You can decide whether the joke is good or not in the comments. We only note that, theoretically, Webb has enough power to photograph the disk of some star. People have already photographed them. We have pictures of the star Betelgeuse, and the clearest shot in history is considered to be of the disk of the star of Antares. Let's hope that Webb will give us something too. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like it to avoid any fake information. Here we constantly collect only genuine photos of James Webb and explain them in plain language. See you soon, friends!